ينصح الخبراء اليابانيين باتخاذ الاجراءات التالية سبسكرايب لايك كومنت فيفرت Okay, now that we had a quick overview of Kali Linux, I want to spend some time talking about the Linux terminal. So you can access the terminal through this application right here. So if we click on that, it will open the terminal window for us. And as you can see, all it is is a black screen where you can type commands. Now, the Linux terminal is actually very, very powerful because it can be used to do anything that you can think of really. A lot of the applications in Linux that have a graphical interface were command prompt programs first and then people made a graphical interface for it. So a lot of the time maybe the graphical interface will be buggy or crash and the terminal program will still work. Also a lot of the penetration testing tools do not even have a graphical interface. A lot of them can only be used throughout the terminal. Not only that, but in many scenarios, you might only have an SSH or a command prompt access to a machine. So you need to know how to use this command prompt in order to achieve your goals. So throughout the course, we're going to be using the terminal a lot. And that's why I want to spend some time just showing you the basics of it and making sure that you're going to be comfortable using it. Now, the basic idea is you type a command and the result will be displayed for you on screen. So let's have a look on a very, very simple command, which is pwd. Now this command prints the current working directory, hence the name pwd. So if I hit enter, you can see it's printing forward slash root, which means right now I am in the root directory. So basically I am in here. This is the root, it's home. So if I do ls, which is a command to list all the directories and files in the current working directory, we should get all of these directories that we see in here. So if I hit enter, as you can see, I can see all these directories in the current working directory. Now, another very useful command is the cd command. This command allows us to navigate into another directory. So for example, let's say I want to navigate into the downloads. All we have to do is type CD, followed by the name of the directory that I want to navigate to. So I'm gonna type downloads. Now, if I hit enter, I should be inside the downloads now. So if I do PWD to see my current working directory, you'll see that it's saying I'm in root, forward slash downloads. So if I do ls here, it should show me all the directories and files inside downloads. So if I do enter, as you can see, I have a directory and a file in here. And these are the exact same files that you'll see if you double click the downloads here. Now, if you want to go back one directory, so similar to pressing the back button in here, all you have to do is do cd, again the command to change the working directory, followed by dot dot. And now if I do pwd, you'll see I'm back in root. And if I do ls, you'll see all the directories and files in root. So that's all good. And there's actually a huge number of commands that you can use. So I'm going to include a link in the resources of this lecture of all the Linux commands that you can use. You don't need to know them by heart. We're actually gonna be using a lot of them throughout the course. So you're going to naturally learn them as you go through the course. Now, if you are using a command and you're not sure about how this command works, you can just use the man command to display the manual of this command. For example, we've used the ls command here to list the files and directories in the current working directory. But if I do man followed by ls, this basically means I'm requesting the manual of ls. So I'm asking how can I use the ls command? So if I hit enter, you'll see I'll get a screen similar to a text file. And basically it's given me a lot of information on how to use the ls command. So you can see that it's telling us that this command will list the directory contents. You can see the way it works by typing ls followed by the options, followed by a file if you, if you want to run it on a file. 
you can see a longer description of the command. And then you can see all the options and the arguments that we can use with this command. Now, in Linux, most of the time, the options will always follow the same syntax. So you either use dash letter or dash dash a word to specify the argument. For example, in here, the dash a and dash dash all will ignore entries starting with dot. So if you keep going down in here, you'll see all the options and arguments you can use with the ls command. And we have another example here. We have the dash L, which means it's going to use a long listing format, which will display more information about the files in the current working directory. So let's have a look on that. I'm going to press Q to exit this. And then we're going to do LS as usual. And since we read the manual, we know we can do dash L to see more information about the files. And if I hit enter now, you can see I'm still getting the same directories, but it's also showing me the permissions, the users, the date created, and so on. So you can use the man command on any command you want, not only on the ls. So you can use it on the pwd, you can use it on the cd, or any other command, and it will show you full description or the manual page of how to use this command. Now, I'm going to clear the screen by typing clear. And the next thing that I want to show you is the dash dash help. So this is something that you can use again in almost all commands and all programs in Linux. So you can just type the program name or the command name followed by dash dash help. As you might think, this will show you a help message telling you what this command is or what this program is, the arguments that it takes, how to use these arguments, and examples at the bottom. Now, another useful thing with the terminal, so I'm going to clear this again, is the arrows. So you can press up to go up to see all the commands that we executed before. And again, you can go down to see, to navigate between the commands that you executed previously. You can also use the tab for autocomplete. So again, let's do ls and you can see all the files. And let's say we want to go into documents. So we can do cd followed by documents. You can type documents. Or if you're lazy like me, you can just do doc and press tab. And as you can see, it's automatically completing the rest of the word for me. So this is something that comes very, very handy when you're using the terminal for a long time. Now, what I also want to show you is how to install programs in Kali from the terminal. So first I'm going to clear this. And the first thing that you want to do is update the sources where Kali can search and download programs from. So we're going to do apt get update. Now, apt-get is the name of the application that allows us to download and install programs. And we're saying update because I'm saying that I want you to update the list of all the programs that I can install. So I'm going to hit enter. And you want to make sure that you have internet connection when running this. And as you can see, it's telling me that it's done. And now we can go ahead and start installing applications. So the first program that I want to install is actually a terminal program. So similar to this one, but it allows us to have multiple terminal windows open in the same window. So in order to install a program through the command line, we're going to do apt-get, which is again, the name of the program that allow us to install programs on the system. We're going to say that I want to install and the program that I want to install is called Terminator. So very, very simple. First of all, we're typing the name of the command, which is apt-get. We're saying that I want to install. And the program name that I want to install is called Terminator. So I'm going to hit enter. And this is going to download and install Terminator for me. So you can use the same command to install any program that you want. You just need to replace Terminator with the name of the program that you want to install.
Now I've already downloaded and installed this before so it didn't ask me to confirm but if you're running this for the first time it might ask you to confirm whether or not you actually want to install this program so all you'd have to do is press Y from the keyboard and hit enter. Now as you can see it's done so if I go to my all applications in here and just type terminator you can see that I have it here so I'm actually going to drag it and put it in my dock so I can access it easily in the future. So now I can just click it in here and that will open Terminator for me. Now this is another application that allow me to run commands. So it's exactly the same as this. So again I can do ls and pwd. The only difference is with this one I can actually right click and click on split horizontally for example and this will split the same screen into two screens where I can run commands at the same time. So I can have some commands in here and I can run commands in here. And then I can even split this more if I want again vertically or horizontally. And as you can see I can have as many terminal windows as I want and this will be very helpful in the future when we'll be running a number of programs and a number of commands at the same time. ينصح الخبراء اليابانيين باتخاذ الاجراءات التالية سبسكرايب لايك كومنت فيفرتو